Hello and welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk. I'm just going to go through a lot of Blu-rays that I've been buying recently. It's been a while since I did a Blu-ray update and I've actually had a few Blu-ray trips since then uh, and rather than spreading it out over a few videos I'm just going to do one super epic video. Uh, most of the, well, I'd say at least half of these are movies that I've not seen before. Uh, I wanted to get movies that have a good reputation but which I've not seen so yeah there are about 50 here so there's some going so yeah let's just get on with it I've got them all lined up on my shelf so I'm just going to pull them off and show them to you um, first up Amazing Spider-Man 2 of course I have seen this uh, I think it is much maligned. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as people make out. I actually think it's a pretty good film. Uh, it's just a bit crowded, a bit of a mess in places. Uh, yeah, if they'd have got rid of Rhino, I think, and got rid of the all the uh, lead up to Sinister Six, uh, you know, blowing the wad before they even get there. I, yeah, I think they could have they could have uh, cleaned it up uh, considerably. I think they could have contained the the damage that came from that film. Um, yeah, next up is the latest Avengers movie, Infinity War. Still one of my favourites of this year. Still in my top five. Uh, yeah, great Marvel movie. Um, next up, Baby Driver. Apparently, to some people, not quite as good as the ice cream truck, but. Uh, one of my favourites of last year. Really great film. Uh, probably Edgar Wright's best film. And that's saying something because so far he's not made a single bad film. All of his all of his stuff's been good. Uh, but yeah, for me personally, I think Baby Drive is probably his best. Uh, just, just by a hair. Next up, a couple of uh, DC animated movies. First one, uh, and the best of the two by a country mile, is Batman... Gotham by Gaslight. I was going to say Gotham Knights, clearly not. Uh, yeah, Gotham by Gaslight. Really good adaptation, I think, of of the of the comic book story, which was one of the first comic book stories I ever bought, uh, and it kind of stuck with me, stuck in my mind. So I think they did it justice, changed it considerably, and I think they uh, they've kind of adapted to because there was a follow up graphic novel to that original one. I think what they've done is some kind of amalgamation of the two whilst also adding their own stuff uh, and I think they've done a really good job with it personally. I liked it. What they haven't done a really good job with on the other hand is Batman Ninja. Um, if, if I'd known what this was going to be like I wouldn't have bought it. Uh, I bought this, yeah, having not seen it. I've seen it since buying it did not like it. Uh, the animation is cracking. The animation is probably the best animation that any of the DC animated movies have had, which makes it even more of a crying shame that the story, the script, the characterization, the voice acting is just terrible. It's it's not up to par, quite frankly. Um, next up, another Marvel movie. Black Panther. Got a bit of a comic book theme going on right now, haven't we? Um, I assure you they're not all comic book movies. Black Panther, great film, really good. Uh, I do think it's a little overrated given the amount of praise that it got. You know, a lot of people giving Oscar talk and all that, and I'm like, no, no, let's let's keep it real. It's, it's a good film, it's very good. I don't think that... Um, Michael B. Jordan's villain, Killmonger, is, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker level, which, yes, some people have said, I'm sorry, but you're smoking crack. If that's the case, you need to get off the drugs. Um, next up is Blade of the Immortal. This is an Arrow release. Uh, HMV at the moment doing 5 for 30 on Arrow. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't own any, any of the Arrow releases, I strongly recommend them because... They do really good transfers, and the special features on them are very extensive indeed. Um, so yeah, Takashi Miike's 100th film. 100th. As a director. That's insane to me that a guy could make 100 feature films. 
as a director. Not not shorts, it's not a mix of shorts and a few documentaries. 100 feature films. Staggering. Absolutely staggering. Um, Coen Brothers first. Blood Simple is next. Good film. Uh, it's not one of my favourites of theirs from, from memory, but, I, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. And given that it's had uh, a, you know, a new tra transfer, uh, it's a director's cut of the film, it's on Blu-ray, I'm, yeah, you know, it says they're a brand new restoration. So I think one of my problems when I first saw it, I saw it on video and it was a pretty nasty copy. So it, it did kind of come across as a bit of a video nasty. Obviously a, a very well written, very well directed video nasty, but just it, it was murky is what I'd say. And I think that spoiled my enjoyment. So I think watching it on Blu-ray cleaned up, I'm expecting that it will go up in my estimation. I do like the Coen brothers quite a lot. Next up is Captain Phillips, Paul Greengrass, uh, Tom Hanks, very good film. Uh, you either like Greengrass's style or you probably find it quite nauseating. I like it. Uh, I, I do think there are times, uh, particularly in the, uh, one of the Bourne films, I think Ultimatum, where it does get a little bit you know, it does make me a little bit seasick, but um, the important thing with Greengrass is that he's he's a stickler for character and story, which, quite frankly, is 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 the meat and bones of any movie, or it should be. Uh, so yeah, a very emotional journey. This film, I think, when you get to the final scene with Captain Phillips at the end, and he finally allows himself to uh, to crack. Um, yeah, it's very touching. Uh, next up, I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan, and this film gives me no reason uh, to be otherwise, because, yeah, Dunkirk, one of the best war films I think that we've had uh, since Saving Private Ryan, uh, it, it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, loved it. Um, some people moan over the use of the time trickery that Nolan is famous for, but I think it, it adds to the immediacy of the situation. It brings you into these different characters' world. Um, a lot of people say there isn't that much character to speak of, but I don't think it's meant to be that kind of film. It's not a character-driven piece so much as a experience. And what Nolan is doing is putting you into that situation, into that battle, um, the hecticness of it, bullets flying overhead, just not knowing what to do. Uh, and I think he achieves that end brilliantly. So, yeah. Next up is, well, two films, actually. Uh, there's two on here, but it, I, I bought it primarily for The Endless, which I've not seen. It is a science fiction film. Um, I hadn't heard of these guys, Moorhead and Benson, until recently. Uh, I think they've had three films out now. Uh, their first is on this as well. This is, a, once again, an Arrow release. So just as a, as a special feature, you get their first film on here, which is, which is pretty good, must be said. Um, I hope I like these guys as much as everyone else seems to. If not, I've got two of their movies. Um, but yeah, it, I like sci-fi. Uh, I, I like the cover on that. It seems quite interesting. The story idea seems quite interesting. So yeah. Uh, just nearly dropped Fast and the Furious 8. I'm sure some people would say that's the best thing you can do with this film, but I liked it. Um, it's not the best Fast and the Furious film, but if you're a fan of the franchise, I, I can't imagine you not really liking it. Um, next up, Forbidden Planet. Hadn't seen this until recently. Obviously bought this and then watched it. Watched it on the day I got it. Uh, it's For anyone who doesn't know, there's a, a Facebook group that I set up called Cine Sci-Fi. If you're a fan of science fiction, head over to that. We talk science fiction on there. Um, and this is one that many people in the group have recommended that I'd never seen. I bought it. I watched it. And I will give my thoughts on it at some point in the near future with a review, I think. Maybe give it another watch first. And, uh, next up, one of my favourite films of last year is Goodbye Christopher Robin. I don't know if this came out in America last year or whether it's uh, a 2018 release for, for those guys. Um, but for me, yeah, it came out in the UK in 2017 and it is one of the best films of 2017. Um, 
Dom Hall Gleason should have been nominated for an Oscar, I think, personally. But hey ho, that's just me. Next up, it is October after all, or it is when I'm recording this anyway. Right? Don't know when you guys are going to get to see it. Halloween, uh, yeah. Didn't own it. <laughs> Seen all the Halloween films, reviewed all the Halloween films, and yet I didn't own this. Uh, but yeah, picked it up on Blu-ray for $4.99. Uh, it was what again HMB. It was like with any purchase, four ninety nine with any purchase. So I thought, you know what, why not? And I did watch it fairly recently. First time I've ever seen it on Blu-ray. Love the transfer. It's really crystal clear. It's the clearest I've ever seen the film, um, and it, it, yeah, it does it justice. So next up, one of my favourite films of the eighties. Love this film, Heather's. Not seen it for some time though. Um, but again, Arrow. Arrow getting their mitts on it. Quite frankly, Arrow should get their mitts on every great film. Um, even the not so great ones, to be honest. They tend to elevate them just by the packages they put out. But Heather's, great film. If you've seen Mean Girls and you like Mean Girls, this is like a much darker version of Mean Girls, written by the brother of the director of Mean Girls. So there is a connection there. Um, yeah, one of my favourite films of the 80s. I bought that. I went out and bought this, actually, because Luke Ryan from Razor Wire Reviews, he, he posted something on Twitter. He just bought it, I think, or just watched it. Um, and, and it just reminded me that I'd not seen it in so long. And then I was in HMV and I saw it. it, I, think it I think it was released that week. Um, uh, yeah, I had to get it. Just had to. So thank you, Luke, for that. Uh, next up. A film I missed this year, I did want to catch it, came out at the beginning of the year, Hostiles, uh, director of Logan, no, no, sorry, Scott Cooper, so, Scott Cooper, so guy who did, what's that Johnny Depp one, the gangster one, I can't remember, I don't care, um, yeah, he did Crazy Heart, which is probably my least favourite of his, um, and out of the furnace, uh, but I, you know, I love Christian Bale. I love Rosamund Pike, who's also in this, and I do like Scott Cooper's style. Um, and I love a good western, and this has had pretty good reviews. So let's see. Next up is Justice League. Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of people hate this film. A lot of people hate the DCEU. Um, I don't. I, I like. Them. I. I this will be one of those movies that I'll always regret having reviewed upon my first watch because I just think everything that surrounded it, the negativity and everything, when I went in and I had such a blast with it, I think, yeah, I overcompensated by giving it a five-star review, which CP from Will I Like It Reviews has had endless fun ribbing me about but hey um yeah i wouldn't give it five stars now i i I'd probably just about give it four i still like it i still enjoy it i have fun with it um it is flawed but it, it's not it's you know not to the degree that people go on about um yeah anyway uh next up the lobster another film i have yet to see i like the cast uh, you know, Rachel Weisz and Colin Farrell. Love Colin Farrell, actually. Um, quite an underrated actor, I think. Uh, you know, anyone who's seen in Bruges, he, he really has a lot of range, uh, I think. More range than people give him credit for. But like I say, I like sci-fi. This is sci-fi. I've not seen it, so we will. And sticking with sci-fi... The Maze Runner trilogy. I think a very good, a very solid trilogy of movies. Um, I still think Hunger Games is probably the one to beat when it comes to young adult novels being adapted to the screen, but I think Maze Runner is, is second on that on that scale and, and not too far behind, it must be said. It's it's very very close indeed. I do like that they stuck with three films and didn't split the last book into two. Um, it's always nice just to have a trilogy, I think. Um, not that I think Hunger Games was hurt by that. I know a lot of people do. I personally don't. But uh, yeah, Maze Runner trilogy. I like it. I think it's got a... Uh, even the second part. A lot of people are down on the on part two, Scorch Trials. I thought that was a good film. Really enjoyed it. Pretty hard hitting for, for what it is, you know. Um, next up is 
One of my favourite films of, of the era, which was the 30s, um, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I, I love Frank Capra movies. You know, It's a Wonderful Life, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. Uh, there's another one of his um, that won all the Oscars. It Happened uh, One Night. Um, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Uh, yeah, all of those films, I love them. If, if, if you've not seen any of those, do check them out because they're awesome. Uh, don't let the the age put you off. Um, yeah, brilliantly written, very in inspirational for Aaron Sorkin's The West Wing, uh, which, you know, if you know me, you'll know I'm a big fan of as well. So, yeah, there you go. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Uh, my Cousin Rachel. So this is directed by, let me get his name right. His name isn't on here, so I can't check it. Uh, I yeah. can't remember his name. Compl oh, there we go, Roger Mitchell. Roger Mitchell, okay. I've not seen this film, so you know I, I, I could be blowing the trumpet of a guy who actually has just made a terrible film. I, I don't know, I don't know what this is like. But I, I bought it based on the strength of his previous work. Um, he's done some really good films, I think. Changing Lanes, Enduring Love, um, even like Less Affair, like uh, Notting Hill and um, Morning Glory. You know, uh, even those films he manages to do something with that I think is, is, is quite special. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a couple more he did. But, you know, Venus. Venus is one. That's a very good one as well. So w one of those directors who I think probably never gets a mention when people are listing directors, great directors, but I think he, he's a little bit like Mark Foster, really. Um, Mark Foster's one of those as well that I think very, very underrated director. So, yeah, that's why I bought that one. Next up... Only the Brave, uh, released this year. I didn't get to see it. Um, I do like Joseph Kosinski as a director. I like his style, his visuals. Um, I still think he's yet to make something truly great, although I do like Oblivion a lot more than most. Um, but yeah, my brother really liked that film. He kept on saying, have you seen Only the Brave yet? Have you seen Only the Brave yet? I was like, no, no, I've not. So. I bought it, I'll watch it, and then I can tell him I've seen it. Next up, Paddington. Really great family film. Uh, Nicole Kidman in it is great as a villain. She's having a lot of fun. Uh, I think uh, getting Ben Whishaw to voice Paddington is a stroke of genius. He really suits the character. And he wasn't originally cast either, so he came on afterwards, uh, after someone else kind of did the part and then realised they were wrong for the part and left the part and then he came on and, and yeah saved the day but great cast, great writing, great production value from the people who uh, made the Harry Potter films so yeah you'd expect nothing less really um, but Paddington really good family film. Next up is Split uh, really looking forward to Glass really looking forward um I love Unbreakable. It's one of my favourite films. Um, it's probably, I think it's Shyamalan's second best film after Sixth Sense. But this is, is very good as well. It's the second part of what is going to be a trilogy. I love this. And when it... Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, I've spoiled it already. I spoiled the ending. It, yeah. If you don't know by now, you, you must have your head in the clouds. But um, yeah, seeing Bruce Willis at the end, making that connection. The, the possibility that we would get another film in the franchise um, excited me a great deal. And the trailers that we've had so far for Glass haven't diminished that excitement. So, Next up, Stronger by David Gordon Green. So this is the guy who's directing the new Halloween. Um, very different kind of film. Got a hair in my mouth. Um, very different kind of film to Halloween. Uh, but he, he's, he's, he's one of those guys, isn't he? You know, he's done comedy, gross-out comedy. He's done serious drama. And now he's moving into horror. So, yeah, probably one of those directors who in a few years' time will will have earned the respect that maybe he's due already. Uh, next up, another DC animated movie, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. Not seen it yet. Uh, heard some good things. We'll see. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. 
don't need to say anymore. You know how good it is. And if you don't, you're either lying to yourself or you're an idiot. Uh, next up is Trespass Against Us. Got this for two reasons and two reasons alone. And that's these two guys right here. Michael Fassbender and Brendan Gleeson, who is one of my favourite actors. I love Brendan Gleeson, we'll watch him in anything. Uh, next up is Wind River. Very good film, very hard hitting, written and directed by Taylor Sheridan, who wrote Sicario, uh, and he also wrote Hell or High Water, which, you know, both of those, absolutely fantastic films. So he's three for three with that. Uh, American Beauty, needs no introduction. One Best Picture, deservingly so, but uh, that was a very strong year. If we're being perfectly honest, there are, there are a number of films that year that could have won, all deserving. Um, but yeah, American Beauty is fantastic. Picked it up for three ninety nine dollars on Blu-ray. Cracking stuff. House of Flying Daggers, which I have just done a video essay on. Uh, a video essay that I'm very proud of, in fact. So if you've not seen that yet, please do check that out on my channel. It was only like a few videos ago. Um, yeah. Much more to this film than meets the eye, uh, I think. A lot going on under the surface. So, Next up is Surrogates. I, I've always thought this was a bit underrated, quite underrated. Uh, I bought it on Blu-ray again and watched it again recently. It, it wasn't quite as good as I remember it being, but I still do think it's it's fairly underrated. It's, it's a nice little actioner, you know, um, with some some good ideas in it but yeah there you go once upon a time in america uh never seen this all the way through seen bits of it here and there probably seen about 45 minutes worth of this film just in bits and bobs here and there so i thought it was time to yeah watch the whole thing um gotham few few seasons of gotham there that i bought but the season three and season two, uh, well, season two I've had for a while, but I'm not doing TV, I'm just doing movies. So, yeah, let's crack on. Um, Blowout. So this is a Brian De Palma film, one of his best, I think. Uh, yeah, I am a bit of a De Palma fan. I do like Brian De Palma. Um, he's very Hitchcockian, uh, as, you know, as he's often said about him. But, I, yeah, I think that's one of his best. Uh, next up is Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I have just reviewed this on my channel, so please do check that out. Very good 70s science fiction. Um, you Were Never Really Here. I liked the trailer for this when it was released. I've not seen the film yet. I love Joaquin Phoenix. He's an incredible actor. Looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with the Joker when that comes out. Uh, but yeah... I got that. I got this mostly because of him and the director. Is it Lynn Ramsey? I can't see. The writing is so. It is Lynn Ramsey. So, yeah, she's a very good director. She's done some extremely solid work. Uh, it must be said. So, with those names, I thought you know what. There are worse things to gamble your money on. Next up is Animal Kingdom, which is a Australian film, a gangster film, some incredible talent in it. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, Joel Edgerton, Guy Pearce, Jackie Weaver, a few others. Yeah, some good names on there. Uh, written and directed by David Michod. Not heard of him before. I have heard of this film. I know it's had a lot of good reviews, so I'm willing to give it a chance, given the acting talent that is in it. Uh, where are we? Let's see. Running out of space to put things. Um, next up, I, I'm not the biggest French cinema fan, uh, but I I did pick up a few uh, just recently. Uh, yeah, for, Found myself in the foreign film section and for some reason decided to pick up a load of French movies. One of them, not, well not one of them, five of them, being in a box set. Jean-Luc Godard. Now I've steered away from the likes of Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard because when I studied film at university they were the guys that, you know, were kind of forced on us as the 
intellectual filmmakers of the French New Wave who really kicked off film criticism and all this balls. Uh, it just it just sounded pretend. They sounded pretentious to me. They they just yeah. I didn't fancy them. It must be said, and I don't know why I did now, to be honest. But I I saw this and I thought, you know what? It was thirty pound. It was a box set. It's got five of of his movies in, um, five of what are purportedly to to be uh, his his better movies. And I thought, you know what? Now's the time. Now's the, let's get over that hurdle. Let's let's check out. John Luke Goddard, uh, once and for all, so I can actually have an opinion that is based on the fact of having seen his work <clears throat> rather than just having studied snippets and clips at university. Um, yeah, I think sometimes when you do that, you, you do find that actually you, you, it, it's you who was full of it uh, for so long and you can have your opinion changed. I'm willing to do that. I'm, I hope I am wrong, to be honest. I do. I hope it's. I hope it's not just pretentious cinema art for art's sake, but that, that it's actually yeah something I enjoy watching. We'll see. I will let you know on that one. Um, next up, Take Shelter, a film I've still not seen. I do own it on DVD, um, but I loved this set. It's really nice. It's limited set. It's only two thousand copies of this particular. Well, I don't know if you can see that properly there, but uh, yeah, it's in a ni nice cardboard box, really thick, really thick cardboard box, very strong and sturdy. It's got a book inside on the making of the film, plus the Blu-ray, uh, like I said, lim limited edition, really liked it. So, treated myself. Hopefully I'll like the film as much. I do like the director, Jeff Nichols. There's you know, I thought Mud is Mud's the best thing I've seen from him so far, but I really liked Midnight Special as well. Um, although most people I speak to about him say that Take Shelter is his best. If that's true, then I'm definitely in for a treat. Tokyo Story. This is another. So this is a by a guy called Yaz, Yazajiro. Yaz, can't even pronounce his name. Yazajiro Ozu. Uh, it's got two of his films on here. It's 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 essentially Tokyo Story, but again, as as a as a special, they they've put on another of his films called Brothers and Sisters of the Toda Family. Um, I've never seen an Ozu film, but if you're into Japanese cinema, his name or just world cinema in general, um, his name is one that crops up quite frequently. He's he's purportedly the the king of like family drama, that kind of thing, it, particularly in Japan. Uh, but yeah, six pounds. I've seen this a few times and I've wanted to get it, but it's always been stupidly priced. It's always been like 14 99 and they never put it down. Um, so so to see it for six pound, I thought, you know what? I'm snatching that up. Uh, back to French cinema again, Amelie. I know uh, Peter, AKA Bearded Movie Guy, AKA the guy who no longer makes videos on YouTube, AKA a good friend of mine. Uh, he hates this film, he hates it. I love it. Uh, it's one of the best French films I've ever seen. Uh, I love the central performance by uh, Audrey Toto, 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 can't pronounce her name, whatever. Uh, but yeah, great film, really quirky. V great visual aesthetic to it, I think. Um, Next up, Cold in July. This is a film by Jim Mickle, who made Stakeland, which is a, a very good kind of indie vampire film. Um, if you like road movies as well, it's kind of that kind of thing. Um, Steelbook, six pounds. Not seen the film, but it's had very good reviews. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to give it a go, as with... As with all the films on here, obviously, that I've not seen, if I've bought them, then clearly I'm willing to give them a go. Um, the Greatest Showman, a film I thought was okay first time I watched it. I I'd loved I loved the soundtrack even before I saw the film. I'd been listening to the soundtrack, really loved it. Um, and yeah, I, I liked the film first time around, uh, enough to want to buy it, so I did. And I've seen it a couple of times since, and it's really grown on me. I just, I just love it. I, it's 
it's just a feel good film. It's one of those films where I love the soundtrack, every song, not a single song in there that I don't want to listen to. Um, yeah, bright colours, great dancing, feel good factor, I like it. Not for everyone, but yeah, I'm that kind of guy. Back with Edgar Wright, we've got Hot Fuzz. Uh, probably, no actually, uh, probably, yeah, probably my second favourite of the Carnetto trilogy. Um, maybe a bit too long. It's like 2 hours 20 minutes, I think. Um, oh no. According to this, it's 2 hours 1 minute. It feels longer than it is. I, I think 1 hour 40, 1 hour 45 would have been a good running time for it. I do think it, it kind of goes on a bit. Um, Next up is Psycho 2. I have just done a video essay on this over on my other channel, uh, Movie Evangelist. So I look into the themes that, that are going on in this film. Uh, one of the best sequels I've ever seen, especially to a horror franchise. Uh, if, if I was going to rank horror sequels, this would easily be in my top five. Easily. So good. When I watched it this time round, I got so much out of it. Loved it, absolutely loved it. I, I probably will do a, uh, a, a just a, a bog standard review of it over on this channel at some point because I've just ordered Psycho 3 and 4 from, from the US. Because, um, yeah, just start, on the strength of 1 and 2, which are both incredible films, I, I don't expect 3 and 4 to live up to them at all, but just, yeah. I want to see them because of how good one and two are. Next up is Kubo and the Two Strings, £4.99. Uh, I've seen the first half hour of this twice. <sighs> Things, yeah, both times something happened to, to stop me watching it. But uh, that first half hour is just incredible, really incredible. Um, I, 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 yeah, I don't think you'd expect anything less from Leica. Is this Leica? I think this is Leica. Is it? Is it Leica that did this? I don't know. Yes, it is. So it's the studio Leica who did this, who obviously did uh, Box Trolls and Coraline and, and just are very good at what they do, which is stop motion animation. Um, and I just I was so blown away by the opening half hour of this that I'm desperate to see it again, the whole thing again. You know, I I want to watch the whole film. Hopefully, the rest of the film will live up to that first act. Next up is Incendies, uh, which is the first film from director Denis Villeneuve. Uh, so far, I've loved everything he's done. Um, have I? Is there anything? No, I don't, I don't think there's anything I've seen of his so far that I haven't at the least really liked. Um, and yeah, this, this, you know, this got, it was a bit of a critical darling when it came out. I didn't pay much attention because, you know, there's plenty of films that always become critical darlings and then the filmmakers seem to just disappear into obscurity. Villeneuve obviously not being one of those. Uh, so yeah, definitely want to check that out. Um, next up is Silent House. This is one of their movies that is filmed as if it was all done in one take. And the fact that it's a horror film really intrigues me. Putting those two elements together, you know, they I've not I've not seen it, uh, but you know, a film like Gravity and Birdman, they'll get the Oscar because they've used that, you know. I don't want to just call it a gimmick, it cheapens it somewhat, but uh, essentially it is, you know, it is a gimmick. Um, but yeah, you give it to like an artsy film and it instantly wins Oscars. This wouldn't even come close to winning an Oscar, and yet, I, I, you know, I mean, it, it might be rubbish, I don't know, I've not seen it, but I'm intrigued anyway. To, to put that concept into a horror film, I'm intrigued to see what they do with it. Next up is Stoker. This is uh, written by Wentworth Miller, who had his name changed on the credits when it first came out, because it was around the time that Prison Break was very big and he didn't want the attention of that to kind of have an effect, have an impact on the release of this film. Um, but yeah, not seen it, like the actors, like Nicole Kidman. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. 
it's 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 by the guy who did Old Boy, so it's probably going to be very gritty and violent and yeah tense. Um, next up, Untouchable, a film that I only found out about um, by looking through the IMDb Top 250, and I saw this was in there. Again, a French film, um, but I was like, what is that? I've never heard of it, and there there it sits in the Top 250. Um, yeah, it's had tons of great reviews. Even the guy that served me in HMV the other day asked me if I'd seen it, and when I said no, he, he went into a whole spiel about what a great film it was so very much looking forward to that one uh, next up another recommendation from the cine sci-fi facebook group is colossus or colossal is it colossus yes colossus the farbin project um, highly regarded amongst the science fiction movie fan community um, but i've not seen it so that's why i got it uh, yeah uh, next up, again, another French film. One of the best I've seen is The Class. I saw this years ago. It's all, it, it's a very kind of realistic drama that takes place in the classroom, and very tense. You really feel for this teacher as he tries to hold this class together. Um, and he's he kind of, you sympathize with him when he kind of crosses a line um, because you kind of have to ask yourself, do I blame him, really, uh, given given the nature of this classroom? So, yeah, really great film. Two left. First is Malcolm X. Recently saw um, Spike Lee's most recent film, Black Klansman. Thought, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I know a lot of people have had some criticisms about the politics. Not me. I thought it was great. Uh, and it, it, yeah, inspired me to pick up something else that is made by Spike Lee. And I've wanted to see Malcolm X for some time. You know, big fan of Denzel Washington. So, yeah, I, th I think I, that's the reason I think I was compelled to buy it, was having seen Black Klansman recently. Uh, and finally, we got an Arrow release, once again, White of the Eye. Know nothing about this film. Bought it because it was in the 5 for 30, and I really like the cover, which I guess says a lot about me, because it's quite a twisted cover, isn't it? Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go, that's that's what I've been buying. Um, if you've seen any of these films and you want to comment on them, please do let me know what you think about them in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you for watching, and until next time, cracking.